What is up everybody? Back today with another video. And today we have got a hinder on the channel. This is the XM18. Check it out here. Got a 3.5 inch, the recurve blade, triway pivot, it's a Gen 6. Got the stonewash bronze titanium, uh, lock side and liner, and a Coyote G10 scale. So real quick, we'll go through what you get in the box here. First off, here's my factory scale I've taken off. I put a sharp dress knives scale on here. Shout out to these guys, make great scale sets. <clears throat> here's another scale set of theirs I have on my GP2. But yeah, they do great work over there. Kind of expensive, but quality work. Um, get your peanuts, of course, real quick. Get your handler sticker. Get your hand assembled and tuned by card. I need to call this guy and have a little talk with him. <laughs> um, we'll get to that in a minute. You got your triway pivot system here. You see, you got your uh, steel spacers, your phosphor bronze, and your nylon. So the way that works is the little spacer there, where this has bearings, and your bearings are thicker than the phosphor bronze and nylon. You need these little spacers. They're stainless steel. You can also get a whole new triway pivot system for nine dollars. Comes with the bearings and everything. Thought about putting skiff bearings in here. Here's the knife, by the way. Um, and they make great bearings. Don't get me wrong, but with knives that already have butter smooth actions, um, I just don't think they make a huge difference. To be honest. Um, so here it is. Here is your stone washed rear. I have the clip in the tip up carry configuration. We have stainless steel hardware, possibly titanium. Can't remember. And so, like I said, this is the sharp dress knife scale. This is snakeskin copper infused carbon fiber. So we've got carbon fiber infused with copper in a snakeskin pattern. And this is a really cool scale, uh, something different. Um, but beautiful at the same time. Flick it out here. Take a look at the recurve blade. Just the stone wash finish here. <clears throat> Probably not my very first blade uh, shape choice, but right now in this market, as of February 19th, 2022. Uh, it's crazy out here, fellas. Uh, if you're into knives at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Man, nobody can find everything. And scalpers are taking over the world. It's rough. The reason I'm complaining about that <clears throat> is because I had to buy this knife from a scalper. Unfortunate. I looked for two months. Never found one in stock. Uh, I missed a drop. Uh, I can't remember who it was. They they did a drop and I missed them. Um, originally, I, I got this off eBay. Unfortunately, I know eBay about hit it off eBay, but it's legit. Um, one hundred percent. You know, I do my little research on the uh, sellers. Uh, this guy, he's pretty much just a knife seller. Had great reviews and he was really good. It's a legit knife for sure. Um, yeah, I paid five hundred and fifty dollars for this. So why would I do that? Um, I have a problem. Uh, uh, that's first and foremost. Um, second off, I really wanted to hinder her. Third off, it was there. So, you can tell me how much I overpaid. I don't care. I'm happy. There we go. Um, these are 425 new, uh, plus taxes. 465 plus shipping, 470 Uh, you know, so I paid like 80 bucks over. Um, and that's not horrible. Uh... Initially, I had bought the three-inch version, uh, black G10 with a Warncliffe blade, and I'm not a fan of smaller knives. I, I like large knives, uh, like at least 7.5, ideally 8 inches, uh, to be comfortable for me. That's what she said, but this knife, it's really well in the hand, um, Real quick, the overall fit and finish on this knife uh, is absolutely fantastic. Um, 
I did add, I uh, did need to add a little bit of Loctite to the pivot and uh and my lock bar screw my uh, i'm sorry my lock bar insert screw here that, that came a little loose um never if you have a hinder knife on your scale screws here please for the love of god never put loctite on these these are not captured they spin freely and on the back side here you have nothing to grab onto um if these had a small flathead slot in them or maybe like a spanner style like this. Uh, I think that would be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, just snug these down, hand tight, uh, and no Loctite. Absolutely no Loctite. Just check them regularly. Make sure they're not coming loose, but please do not Loctite them. You, if you ever have to take the scale off, you will not appreciate yourself for doing that. And the next guy you sell the knife to will not appreciate you either. <laughs> so... Like I said, fit and finish, fantastic. Um, the ergonomics on this knife are the best in the game as far as, as what I've dealt with. And I know I've got, I've dealt with a lot of the high-end knife manufacturers now. You know, I've got the Medford, I've got some Chavez, uh, Chris Reeves, you know, all the big boys, uh, except for Strider. Had a Strider, uh, Protect Strider s and wasn't a fan, uh, probably like a regular Strider more. Another Chris Reed. Um, but the fit and finish is absolutely on par uh, with all your major companies. And the price, too, at $425 for the standard price, I think is a really, really fair price for this knife. Obviously, it's high, um, but you're getting a uh, quality tool here. Obviously, this is the choil design. It's got a very smooth choil there with your, you know, your oversized flipper. But again, I have, I have large hands, just a bigger dude overall. And uh, I can get a full four finger grip on the three and a half inch uh, with room to spare. Can choke up. It's a really large finger toil. Uh, allows you to, to choke up with really no worries. Um, the recurve blade shape, I do like that. I haven't had a recurve before. Uh, now the action with these bearings in there. Um, the best action I have on a uh, folding knife on a frame lock knife. I say best. It's probably tied with my 308 here. I'll show you the ZT 308. Um, I mean that's. But this one the blade is pretty heavy, so it's kind of pulling itself down there. Um, yeah, there's no blade play with this one, and it. Uh, but the smoothness on this hinderer is just smoother. Uh, there's no. Uh, on this one, there's a slightly gritty feeling as it's closing, just the slightest amount that you can really only tell when you do it next to the hinderer here. Um, so yeah, this is obviously a flipper model. Uh, your flipper tab here, it's pretty sharp, uh, the tip of it. We'll compare the uh, ZT0562 carbon fiber, pretty much the ZT version of this knife. Uh, and I've got a upgraded MXG gear pivot on this knife. Um, so yeah, uh, that's one difference. Uh, this is a little more rounded. It's a little sharper. Um, and on this 0562, it's skinnier too. It's thinner. And it's more like a skinny version. Um, but yeah, smoothness, absolutely there. Um, like I said, this is on the bearings. I've thought about maybe trying the phosphor bronze. Uh, I just don't know why I would right now. You know, I don't, I'm not out in the woods, you know, I'm not special ops, you know, I, I think the bearings work fine and I don't really think I want to be in a situation where they're going to get gummed up, uh, with dirt and debris. If so, I probably got another knife that worked better. <laughs> um, so that's the flipper tab there. You also got your thumb studs. Now for me, the detent on this knife is fantastic. It lets you flip it smoothly every time. Every time, without it being too rough on your finger. And for me personally, uh, thumb flicks work absolutely fantastic. So the detent is absolutely spot on. Uh, I could not be happier with the detent. I can do a reverse flick. Um, one thing that's kind of hard to do is, uh, when I use my right hand to flick open a frame lock knife, I have to kind of grab, uh, which this clips on your right hand side, normally it's on the left, but 
I've got to kind of move my index finger because it really tends to grab. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, man, I, I'm really digging this knife. I think I'll have another hinderer. I might get a three inch as more of an EDC model. Those three inch worn clips, I'm really digging those. Um, you know, I was afraid that three inches was going to be too small, but after getting the three and a half, um, I'm definitely glad I went with a three and a half on my first one. Uh, but I think a three inch would be really cool to have. That'd be a really cool EDC option. <sighs> now let's get into what I was talking about at the beginning uh, with the guy that did the fit and finish on it. Um, fit and finish is great. The problem is this knife is borderline dull. Um... And this is how it came. Uh, you know, I did buy it from a scalper, but I really do not think this guy used this knife. There's not a scratch on it when I got it, and I went over it with thirty for thirty minutes with a fine tooth comb when it got here, just to make sure, make sure it was real, make sure it wasn't used. Um, just you know, all kinds of different shit. So let me show you how well it does not cut paper. So, you know, absolutely love the knife. It, it, it does great. Action is great. It's just freaking dull. Like, embarrassingly dull. Um, I mean, my $70 CVVs come with better edges. And this is 20 CV, and it's a recurve blade. So it's going to be difficult to sharpen. Um, it's it's just kind of an annoyance, you know. And if you're going to get on here and say it's a hard-use blade, it's not supposed to cut paper, literally, literally sell every knife you have, okay? Go buy a gas station knife and never come back to the knife community, okay? If, if that's what you think, please go do that. Because um, let me show you why. Here's my Medford Praetorian T. Absolutely huge knife. Tight butter. So, no excuses on that. Um, you know, I did, I did get it secondhand, even though it was new. It was sold as a new knife, and it was. I, I, I'm still almost 100% sure this came exactly like this from Hinderer. Um, so, that's disappointing. You know, that's the one thing. Um, you know, I've got my work sharp sharpener, and I can do pretty good on it. Um, but I haven't sharpened any of my really high-end knives yet. But, this being a recurve, I'm sure I could do it. Um, but I may end up sending this one off to get sharpened. Um, I just gotta have that sharp knife. So, uh, again, real quick, it's just uh, 20 CV. So yeah, uh, it's a Hinder XM18 3.5 inch, my take on it there. Fantastic knife. Um, if, if you had the choice to get just one knife, I think this would be in the running for the top one, uh, especially where, you know, just the modularity, uh, the way you can make it your own. And there's so many options out there, even though every single one of them sold out on every single side everywhere, you know. But there's options. Um, I really like to get the HMBS, the... Uh, Hinder modular backspacer system. Put a backspacer in here, that'd be cool. But anyways, this video's running a little long here, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up on the Hinder XM18, guys. Finally getting caught up on some of my knives I've had. The video's been a little sporadic. Um, but trying to keep it a little more consistent now. So I've got this Hinder. I'm pretty sure my Med Medford review is up here. Um, I've still got these Chavez knives to do. I'll get there. Uh, I like my Chavez knives here. Um, and yeah, uh, shout out to DLT Trading again. I might single-handedly be keeping them in business. <laughs> um, uh, no, but, but yeah, DLT Trading guys, absolutely fantastic. If you're in the market for a knife and DLT Trading has it, buy it from them. You will not be disappointed by before 2 o'clock uh, Central Time. And it will ship out that day 99% of the time. Uh, this knife, today's Saturday. Ordered this knife Thursday afternoon. Uh, paid six bucks for USPS and it was here today. Uh, uh, less than 48 hours later. Oh, so this is the uh, 
this is another review I've got coming. Uh, I'll show you real quick. I've got this Chris Reeves Knives review. Um, it's another $800 Chris Reeves knife. We've got the Bogwood inlays, Damascus. That'll be coming soon. Can never do it on camera. Of course, make myself look stupid. Um, so we've got that. We've got the Chavez. And then we've got the new Dimco AD 20.5 with the Shark Lock. Uh, like I said, she got this today. Really nice little knife. I'm digging it. And I've got some RGT scales coming for this thing. Some Fat Carbon Arctic Storm. I'm sorry, White Storm. Um, so this knife's 150 bucks. The scales are 160 So, you know. But I love personalizing my knives. That's my thing. But anyway, guys. I appreciate y'all watching. I'm going to get this video uploaded here for you. And stay tuned for the uh, next few reviews I got coming. And have a great day.